Hello everyone and welcome to the Unity Creature Creator. If you remember back in my video, Top 10 Games That Spore Fans Should Look Into, I did mention this one a long time ago. However, at the time, the creator, David Lochner, whose name I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, he was completely unavailable due to university, but he has returned and he's returned with a released demo. This is on Steam right now, and let's dive in. So the creature creator is indeed a creature creator. It's designed to create games and it's basically meant to be a more modern take on the Spore creature editor. This is not going to be a fully fledged game like Adapt, Elise and Eclipse, Thrive, etc. I believe the entire point of this demonstration is to create an open source environment and foundation for other developers to work off and create their own maybe spore like games or just whatever it is that people would like to do with it and uh, by the way i love this little instruction here these are all three creations that i have made playing around the editor and uh, you can also poke them you can displace them you can just you know shove them off the edge <laughs> like that you can i absolutely love the ragdoll physics so much and every now and then the limbs just go crazy reminds me a lot of arc survival of old when uh, their dinosaurs you know the ragdoll physics kicks in and they just go flying and for whatever reason I'm not sure why David Lochner had introduced this feature, but I absolutely love it. If you spam right click, you get an absolute earthquake, and that is far too satisfying, but I'm not going to disorientate you with that. First of all, I'm going to go ahead then and just reset my gameplay. Reset world progress, job done. And let's go ahead then and play in single player. Yes, single player. There is single, there is multiple. Now, the entire point of this, as you can see, we are starting with a good old pitiful worm. And it is, oh, actually, this is a little bit different. Good. He's actually changed it. So initially, it kind of just threw you in blind. You had no idea what to do. But now you can see, okay, cool. Go over to this little glowing thing over here. You have no eyes. You've got no limbs. You've got no parts. But I just unlocked this awkward eye. So if I return back to my little pedestal over here, select the build. We have vision. We have color. If I select it, we have modifying arrows as well. It really is basically just meant to be a modern take on the Spore Creature Editor. So you're not going to see anything, you know, really too different. Just refreshingly familiar, in a way. Uh, if I select this one, I get a pattern. We go over to this little burger looking thing. I unlock <laughs> the Colgate commercial. Oh, and I'm being attacked by a snake. Cool. Okay, don't want that. Let's go ahead and return to our little editor pedestal then. Build, and as you can see, We've got a little mouth, which I'm just going to stick on right there. Going to scroll it in, and I'm just going to put my spine, or yeah, I'm just going to extend my spine into the mouth. That's normal, isn't it? Uh, do I have any limbs yet? I do not, but I do have some paint. I've got some stripes. Let's go ahead then and make this. Hmm, I'm going to make it Christmas coloured. I think it's a good idea, isn't it? And additionally, you can also change the tiling. So what if I were to, oh my goodness. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> so I can change the tiling quite dramatically like that. And I can also change the material of the creature, make it metallic, make it shiny. Let's return to play then. And uh, now we're just a decapitated head and neck wandering around. So as you've probably noticed, this is the absolute starter area. It's a cute sort of introduction to just show you how to get some basic parts. And with this being open source by the end of this month, it's a nice little, you know, area or bit of inspiration for other developers to work off and innovate from. Go back to build. I got a detailed parts, the tri thin. And by the way, if you hadn't already noticed, a lot of these parts have uh, these little descriptions by Giga to 18, super ding. The Colgate commercial parts was by Daniel Luckner, of course. All the different parts were actually created by people within his community. So it's really cool to see all these various parts get added. Ah! Oh, but I can swim. So this is funny, actually. When I first tried this, the bridge kept breaking and I kept drowning. It would kill me instantly upon hitting water. I guess not anymore. I'm not going to complain because now if I unlock this one, I unlock everything. I have access to all parts all different features and patterns and we can see a bit of the roadmap right here so as the roadmap implies we are currently at the first of august on the early bird stage this is where the demo is released for the very first time with the absolute basics and what you see right now well a little bit more from right now well, i'll show you more in a moment 
In the first week of August, the game will be released on Mac and Linux. There will be Steam stats, achievements, and a couple of more extra things. And more importantly, he will respond to all the development feedback and do some bug fixes while he works on the progress towards week two, Old McDonald. This will be the major release of the open world farm map. It's going to be a much larger map. Parts and patterns will now be placed around both maps to be collected. However, your creatures will be safe. You just need to unlock the relevant parts to be able to reconstruct them. On the 21st of August, we'll have the Shoe Shiner, which is basically just a polish update where you try to, you know, it once again addressing all the bugs and feedback from the old McDonald stage and just fixing all the necessary tweaks and such. And then on the 28th of August, the end of this month, we reach the Hackerman stage where the source code to the creature creator and the standalone plugin will release. So it makes me a little bit sad to think that perhaps he might not be expanding on this very much. I, I really don't know entirely what his long-term plans are. But again, open source, this means that the code is going to be available to everyone so people can make their own iterations of this, create their own games, their own projects. Hell, maybe we'll see yet another hopefully viable Spore clone. Wouldn't that be lovely, eh? So while we're here then, I mean, it wouldn't be my channel if we didn't play with the editor a little bit. We have the Snaggleteeth part by Skorados. Let's go ahead and check that one out then. And a little trick that uh, Drackey showed me actually was that the heads are a little bit uh, clunky when you attach them. Same for the tail parts as well, but if you just extend the spine into it, it's the exact same technique I've done a million times in Spore. That actually works <laughs> here, which is lovely. And uh, you heard me right, by the way, there are indeed tails as well. Uh, the spine works just as fine as a tail, just like in Spore as well. But you can also just use this part here, which again, I'm going to extend the spine into to make it a little bit more seamless. Not quite the same as Spore, but again, it's very good though. We have some limbs, we've got some arms and some legs. I don't believe there's any way to snap and detach legs or limbs just yet, like in Spore. Perhaps I'm missing a keybind, perhaps it's not yet been implemented. There are abilities and such as well, which have also not been implemented yet, or at least it doesn't work for me. Such as how these feet have sprint, if they go to the features, lot of the mouths have eat, bite, roar, if they go to accessories, they strike, dig, swim, etc. The only thing that seems to work for me so far is jumping and flapping and even then it's a little bit weak but I hope this is all going to get addressed in either the steam powered update on the 7th or the shoe shiner update on the 21st but as you can see just like a quick little demonstration right there oh let's change the pattern actually oh it's kind of crazy that you can change the tiling I did not know that before I set it back to five then oh look at that it looks like wrapping paper I, <laughs> I absolutely love this and you can change the individual uh, parts as well. You can't apply patterns to everything, but you can still change the colours. You've got like a fair bit of control here. As you can see me demonstrate right here. It's cool, man. It's a cool little start. And once again, with this being open source, I'm so excited to see how the community, how people in general take advantage of this. I'm going to name this one Piñata. And as you can see, my other creatures... Uh, and even though I reset my gameplay, my other creatures did remain, thankfully. So this is Blurple, one of my first uh, creation attempts. We have Chompy, we have Hogsneck. And now if I exit out of the game or return to the main menu, you can now see Pinata is right there. And we're just going to punch him and fling off to the side, because that is far too satisfying. So yes, well, ooh, oh god, just saw a bit of the leg physics there. <laughs> so yes, welcome to David Lochner's Creature Creator. There's one more thing to show you, and that is that multiplayer does in fact exist. I'm going to join this random person's island. Can I load my other creatures? I can. I'm going to become Chompy. And uh, are there... Oh yeah, you can see them over there. There's one player over there. Uh, Prezard. And it did say there was another one somewhere. I'm not sure. I feel weirdly large compared to these guys. <laughs> there's a snake down here. Yeah, so like I said, there's meant to be ways that you can attack, but it's not currently implemented yet. <laughs> it looks like a little animate burger. Like a weird pale white burger. That's really odd. Oh, I love it. Oh, um, this was... This raft has been all the way out in the distance in the past. What happens if I click this one? I can't. No! Are you serious? Wait, let me, let me let me try. I have wings. Let me jump. Well, that's just embarrassing. So for whatever reason, Chompy just refused to jump properly, but my Pinata creature actually will jump. So let's go ahead then and just like kind of leap our way into this. What do we get from this then? I received a thousand DNA. Ooh. 
cool. All right then, so I just increased my budget then. That's nice. I really wish the treasure chest over there would do something as well. Once again, I think like just everything is, is the absolute bare bones basics. So it's a nice old demonstration. I just wish the treasure chest did something. I, did that. I like the shinies. I like the shiny collectibles. And I really look forward to seeing what achievements he adds in the game because mate, I am a sucker for achievements. But anyway, that is enough to show for now. So I hope everyone's enjoyed. Oh, look at him go. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy it's uh, multiplayer. That's gonna have such amazing potential. And in case you're wondering, uh, in terms of multiplayer, it is as simple as just, just create, you know, test. You can change a whole bunch of settings, add passwords, max players. Uh, when it comes to the farm, which is not yet available, you can have up to 16 players. But as we only have the island at the moment, that is, you know, up to eight. You can make it PVP, spawn NPCs, yeah, I'm uh, really looking forward to it. But I rambled long enough about this one. I really look forward to the updates and I'll keep you all informed as well. So as always, thank you for watching. <laughs> Hope you're looking forward to it. And I'll see you all again next time. Cheers.